after the last video, are you wondering why have we only talked about the organization of the spacings between our fingers rather than fine-tuning any of the notes? Well, you've been fine-tuning note after note your whole life. And after fine-tuning note after note, are they in tune yet? Because what you're doing by fine-tuning every single note without organization is like trying to write down an answer on a test that you don't know is right or not, but your real obstacle is actually to have a functional pen. In short, what you really need to work on is your tools and not the results. You need to practice your fingers and not the notes. And the system will help you simplify, unify, narrow down, and pinpoint the exact task your left hand is doing. And that's what the system is about. After the last video, mastering how simple it is to play one octave scales anywhere on the fingerboard, we're going to return to talk about our basic units, whole step and half step. But before we do that, what good news do we learn that we have to remember at all time? That's right. We only have four fingers that make three spacings, and there are only two possibilities which spacing can be. So we're going to talk about an exercise progression that will help you familiarize with these basic units, whole step and half step. You might wonder, we also play augmented second with two neighbor fingers. So why is that not a basic unit? Well, we rarely, rarely ever play two augmented seconds in a row with three neighbor fingers. Not only that, having augmented second as a basic unit is like instead of quarters and five and tens, you count your money with seven, thirteen, and forty-seven. And imagine you have to pay for something that is fifty bucks, and then you have to try and put it together with seven thirteen dollar bills. That's why we don't use augmented second as a basic unit. So let's use whole step as an example first. What can one simple whole step make on the fingerboard? options. They're all just one whole step between two fingers. Besides being mind blown about how many options one simple whole step can make, do you also realize even though they're all just one whole step, how many of them are so much more difficult than the other ones? For example, we usually don't have trouble playing a major second or a major six like this. But as soon as we have to switch over and make a perfect fourth, we become impaired of how difficult that is. And a chord like this feels very simple and easy, but if we just have to play this or switch over or they just become impossible. And that is what the system aims to do. It has to bring all the different options of the same task in the left hand. We want to bring them up to the same playing field. So we're gonna talk about this exercise progression that will help you familiarize with your whole step and half step basic units. And I believe it's very important to practice these things without the music, but instead have a chart like this in mind, because this will help your brain learn more actively, especially it will help you learn what relationship between your fingers create what notes not the other way around. And remember, intonation has to be a brain, fingers, ears operation, and not an eyes, brain, fingers, ears operation. So let's start with a whole step between your first and second finger. And we can just build it from the first position, starting from an A on the G string. Build a whole step. Cross over to D string to do the same thing. To A string. While you do that, you want to notice what interval it creates when you cross over the strings. Perfect fourth. Perfect 
basically you're playing major second and perfect fourth. And they're all exactly the same. And you can relate to that while you do this movement. And now you get to the top and you want to go back down. And you can do one to one to back down like before. You can reverse two one two one, and it goes like this. And again, notice the interval crossing the string creates. <laughs> If you do one to one two, it creates major six. But if you do two one two one coming down, then you create perfect fourth again. Basically, the point is to create the whole picture. So it doesn't matter you you do one to one two up, one to one two down. As long as once you reverse the order into two one two one, you do the opposite one. Get the point and do each progression until it feels easy and it would be great if you actually start each day a little differently because then you keep the exercise alive so the next thing for this exercise to progress is to cross quicker so instead of building a one two on the same string we cross the two onto the next string <laughs> Do it till it feels easy. And you want to reverse. The challenge is always more in the crossing. The next step is to immediately cross. relatively easy at this point. But we will probably also notice that some of the intervals feel more foreign to you than the other ones. And that's what you need to do. Familiarize till they feel easy and then bring them onto the same playing field. So now, if you were to play a perfect fourth out of nowhere, try and find a place in the exercise when perfect fourth was very simple and very easy. And see if you can walk yourself to that feeling. Somewhere in there, there it is. Maybe it feels like a lot to get to a perfect fourth. But the way we've been doing, fine tuning every single perfect fourth when it shows up in a piece, and then it shows up in another piece, we have to fine tune it all over again. We just can't have two individual notes that are very simple to play, but when you have to play them together, that the difficulty level goes from 1 to 2,000. It might take some time for the system to become second nature to you, maybe weeks and months or years, but the way of tuning every single perfect fourth as an individual challenge and fear it illogically for your whole life has to end, and the system will end it. So back to the exercise. So where we are now, crossing directly, there are basically double stops, but played melodically. So what you can do to bridge your mind about double stops is to overlap a little bit. Just like that. And you will also realize double stops, they start with one of the notes. It's not both fingers down together. It is one finger with the relation from that finger. There are many ways to progress next, but I suggest transposing. Transposing is really a win-win process of reassuring, remembering the sequences you just practice, but you also gain more notes from the same sequence you just practice, just by starting from a different note. So we can start with the third position, starting from a C on the G string. <laughs> Also familiarize till it feels easy and then move on to crossing quicker. And then cross.
cost even quicker. You should take a little more time. Not I'm just demonstrating. Other options to progress include starting from a different finger, like two or three, and then do the whole thing just based on the second finger. Or you can also work on the other basic unit, which is half step. And I thought this is the perfect time to be thankful that we only have three spacings and two uh, spacing choices to practice, right? Besides certain intervals being harder, you might also notice that um, different positions and sometimes even the same notes on different octaves are just much harder. Like for example, if you do the higher octave is right here, but then you might feel like you have to learn over again, even though they're pretty much exactly the same. Um, so this is what the system does is to make the connection and bridge all the things that are the same situation that you weren't aware were the same before. And so what you should keep doing is to keep using what you already know to teach you and familiarize the things you didn't know as well, but are actually the same situations. You should use this exercise progression to familiarize with your basic units. And every day you can start a little differently. You can start with a different order uh, from a different position or start with a different unit, different finger. You can also progress differently transpose to a different position, transpose to an octave higher. You can change it up to keep it interesting every day. Keep your mind alive and active while you do the exercise, and eventually you'll paint the whole picture. But what you should never do is jump progression in a way that you no longer make the connections between them. You should always be seeing that it's same interval, same notes, just different fingers or different positions. By keep making these connections, you will simplify unify and pinpoint the task your left hand is doing and you will bring everything onto the same playing field that are supposedly the exact same situation. And don't forget, practice each progression, each step till it feels easy before you progress to the next. Before we go today, I'm going to give an example of how this very simple basic concept can be implemented directly in a real piece. Tchaikovsky Concerto First Movement the super cool part with very intimidating double stops. I've highlighted here in sections. Each of them is within one position, and in the system, we would consider each one within the position as a group. We'll talk about grouping the technique another time, but let's just take a look at what situations we're dealing with uh, within each group in the left hand. The first one is based on the first finger on G, and we can use our exercise progression to walk us there. Whole step, whole step, based on the G, right? And the next one, based on a B flat in the first finger, same thing, using the exercise to walk us there. Also two whole step. simple, right? Next one based on a D. This one is a half step and a whole step. But there's a little variation from the last two groups. Now the next one based on the F and also half step, whole step looks like. Right? And guess what? You go through the first time of the same passage. It's also a whole step, whole step, and a half step, whole step, two each, just based on different notes. First one is based on a D. Next one based on an F, two whole step. And the next one based on A and a half step, whole step. based on C and a half step whole step. I just sped it up, but you should go through the, the exercise to see the, the, the finger relations to walk yourself there. Walk yourself there. Okay, I'm just, you know, speeding things up. There you go. Directly implemented into a passage in a very difficult piece. But if you look at it that way, it really isn't so complicated anymore, right? 
And that's especially why you should really get to know your whole step half step between your fingers across all strings and transpose that knowledge across all the fingerboard to be based on every single one. Anyway, that's it for today about familiarizing with your whole step half step basic units and the exercise progression that will help you to do so. If you want more information, more details about this intonation system, subscribe and I'll see you next time.